Hello everybody and welcome back to Winner in a Week, a series of poker coaching videos designed to provide even novice players with all of the information and means they'll need to beat up to 80 or 90 percent of all the opponents they'll face at at least the low and mid limits. My name's Dylan and in this sub-series we'll be covering everything having to do with bet types, so-called moves, lines of play, and pot manipulation. Although the concepts that we'll cover here very much pertain to the game of No Limit Texas Hold'em, which is arguably the most popular form of the game played today. All of the concepts that we will cover pertain to all forms of poker that you may know. That being said, we will break the sub-series down into either two or three videos. This very first video will definitely cover in detail all of the different pre-flop moves that you'll see. Uh, the different bet sizing that pertains to these different moves and we'll also look into post-flop play uh, briefly so that you can understand the example hands that we'll look at at the end of the video. In either the second and or the third video we'll go into much uh, greater detail into post-flop play and how pre-flop play determines post-flop play and how actually both are interconnected. So to kick it off, we have our outline here as always, and we have here play when in position on your opponents as often as possible. That can't be stressed enough. Position in Texas Hold'em is everything. Uh, in Pot Limit Omaha, it's the arguably the most important, even more important than your hand, uh, very often. And of course, yeah, uh, position changes in, in games such as uh, 7 stud and 5 stud, but um, position as such is paramount. So um, whenever you can play in position, the earlier you are, the stronger your hand needs to be in general. The later you are, the more liberal you can get. Um, A1, always be mindful of the following, uh, both pre-flop and post-flop. So respect the positions as said, the effective stack sizes and effective pot odds. That means uh, effective stack is the smallest of all the stacks that are involved in a hand. Okay, that means uh, you have, for example, say you're deep stacked at 150 big blinds and the opponent that you're against has only 30 big blinds. Your effective stack is then 30 because you're basically defined what you can get away with them and the moves you can make. Um, everything is determined by the lowest common denominator. Uh, the effective pot odds, in it, of course, um, yeah, pot odds based on the, the smallest stack involved in the hand. So if you see small stackers, as we'll cover very, yeah, actually in great detail in the Texas Hold'em section, um, who happen to be professional small stack players, know how they play, right? Know what you're getting into before you make moves uh, against other big stack players when small stack players are at your table. <laughs> that can markedly change how the situation actually is and um, yeah, uh, how that works out. So uh, keep that in mind, you know, how deep are the stacks on your table? Is there a small stacker out there who can get creative? Um, yeah, or how many fish are there? And of course, for all of this, you need to see uh, the previous video that we just did on uh, player profiling. Uh, point B here, we've got uh, type of opponent, uh, as stated, player profiling video, definitely see that, and the key stats um, for any given situation. And yeah, for the key stats, of course, see the series on poker math essentials made easy. Yeah, all of these videos, by the way, guys, they build upon each other. That means that um, if you haven't seen the previous videos, this video will make much less sense than if you had. Okay, so definitely start from the beginning and work up. That's how the whole thing's been designed. And yeah, if something's unclear, then go back to the previous videos and review that. Um, good. One C. Point uh, pot odds, uh, you're giving your opponent and the odds they'll likely need, as well as the fold equities, so-called fold equity. Again, all that's been covered in the Poker Math series. Uh, take a look at that and <laughs> watch it again and again until it's very, very, very clear. All right. So that means when you make a bet, don't just be making a bet, um, you know, because you heard some coach say that you should in this situation, don't just be making a bet. Because uh, it felt right, don't just be making a bet because you kind of thought you were ahead. Um, have a very clear, logically sound reason for every single move you make. 
not only should you have a very clear and logical reason for every move you make, but every move you make should be part of a bigger plan. Which brings us into point A2. Uh, planning a hand. Uh, and here we have here the game, the limit, the player, the position, the table specific dynamics. All of this should be considered. Um, I'll get into that last point here in just a moment here in red. Um, concerning bet types, we always have to distinguish between the game. Okay, that means cash game, that means uh, tournament play, uh, phase of tournament play, uh, type of game in the phase of tournament play. It also means the game itself. That means if you play in Texas Hold'em, it's different than if you play in Pot Limit Omaha. Uh, it's different than if you play in Limit Hold'em. It's different than if you play in uh, Five Card Stud or Draw. Uh, very much different than if you play in Seven Stud. And, you know, of course, then you have the high low split variations of everything that I just mentioned and yeah uh, <laughs> planning a hand is very game specific okay that's gotta be very very clear and as I had mentioned here at the beginning of this video if you understand these concepts you'll you'll understand the concepts uh, for every single game but be sure that you uh, that you apply them accordingly okay there, I mean every single game has its specific dynamics and these dynamics you should very much know um, otherwise, you can get into pretty serious, uh, serious problems. Knowing this information here, uh, properly understanding the concepts, and more importantly, the principles that we're going to cover here, you'll you'll be way ahead of the curve, um, basically in every, any given round that you sit down at. Uh, the limit itself is, of course, important. Um, back in the day, you know, they they didn't play table stakes, so that means that if you've seen videos like Shade, for example. Um, you, you can make a bet with all the chips that you have at your table and somebody could raise you um, and basically you know under the assumption that you have no more money then you can go underneath the table pull out your yeah, sack of money and come over the top uh, and or write a check and yeah that was that was before table stakes um, you still find those games from time to time it's pretty intense uh, it essentially means that you can you can raise somebody out of the seat even if you don't have it in front of you. Now, um, that's really not an issue today. It's definitely not an issue online. Uh, everything is table stakes, and uh, the real issue here is with limit. That means it's, if if it's no limit, pot limit, or fixed limit. Okay, so if it's a fixed limit game, then very generally you have a four bet maximum per betting round. Okay, if it's a pot limit game, we'll get into that shortly, and no limit, of course, you all know. You can push everything you have in front of you at any given time. All of these different limits also determine how you play and what you play. Okay, next point here, player. Um, yeah, definitely see the video on player pro profiling. Uh, if you're playing live, you, of course, have all the physical tells, um, and again, definitely see Mike Carroll's book of tells for that. Um, as well as the video that we just produced. Good position, of course, the later you are, the better. Table specific dynamics, that means um, not only the limit, not only the game, not only the player, but the history that you have with these people. Okay, let's say you've been, you know, uh, showing a really wild table image, for example. People think you're a maniac, or people think you, uh, you don't care, you have no idea, whatever else. You then need to adjust your bet types, your different moves, your lines of play based on that table image, very much so. Uh, if you have a really tight image, of course, the opposite is the case, but definitely always keep in mind how your opponents perceive your general poker persona. Alright, now here we go. Know the pain levels. This is much more important, I think, in live play cash games than uh, online. Pain levels, I uh, define that as, you know, where the <laughs> where your opposition starts to feel the burn. That means if you have a really, really tight, nitty player, you can maybe just raise it up two and a half big blinds when he's in the big blind and, you know, he starts um, sweating. Okay, you, you, you raise up that same amount uh, to somebody who's uh, limped and you're, you're coming over the top for two and a half or three, you know, and he's maybe deep stacked or... Uh, you know, you know that he's an ex extremely wealthy guy that doesn't really care about the money. Um, this little two and a half, three, even ten big blinds 
may not discourage him at all. So know this, not everybody, you know, contrary to popular current belief, thinks in terms of big blinds. They don't think in terms of pot odds. They very often don't think at all. So uh, know that. Be aware of that. That's it's a highly important um, consideration whenever you're making any given move, whenever you're making a bet, whenever you're checking, raising, whatever. Um, know your opponent. Know, especially this is pain level point that I put here. This is very, I think... Yes, very, very few people speak about it, but especially in live games, I mean, these pain levels, if you get in, you know, especially if you're playing with gangsters, you know, if you're playing underground games, you definitely will be, I'm sorry to break it to you, um, or if you're playing with guys with, you know, seriously deep pockets, um, they they won't care about uh, a five-time a five -time big, blind, uh, big blind raise. It just doesn't even occur to them. All they see is, you know, uh, 10 bucks or whatever. They, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. All they see is the numbers. So they're not thinking like you as a as a trained poker theorist will be thinking. Yeah. So you have to really get into their minds and know know what you know, know what they're able to do, know what they're willing to do, and know what the pain levels are. So if there is no pain level, let's say this guy's painless, um, that means he's willing he's willing to go all in at any given point. This is a guy you need to have to your right, and this is a guy that you need to get aggressive against uh, very much post-flop when you have a lock. That means a set um, on a non-connected, non-suited board and the like. Okay. Um, other guys, you know, the pain levels are, are markedly lower. And you can have the same effect with a two big blind raise as you will with a 15 big blind raise. So just understand this point right here. Very, very important. Um, know whom you're playing and yeah, what exactly this level is. Estimating villains' ranges, um, probability of hitting high equity flops with those ranges. Okay, all of this was covered in the statistics section of the um, poker math videos, and also covered in the player profiling videos. But that you should, this you should definitely look at um, when you have when you have statistics programs such as uh, Hold'em Manager, which we'll be looking at here shortly. Um, you'll very precisely know what your opponent's ranges are. Okay, you'll you'll see the percentages over time, maybe with the sample size of even 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 hands. That, in that case, is very, very clear when you're playing live. Of course, you don't see that. So you just kind of, you know, heads up. What's this guy playing? You know, every fifth, every fourth, every eighth hand, every 15th hand, how tight is he? Uh, when he does play, how, how aggressive is he? How passive is he? Uh, this kind of stuff. And given this information, just kind of heads up play, you'll you'll start to, even even live, you'll understand, you know, what a villain's, uh, i.e. an opponent is playing, uh, in, in most cases. You'll, I mean, not, not always. And of course, you as a good player, you're going to be changing up your, yeah, your play all the time, so it's going to make it more difficult for your opponents to put you on accurate ranges as well. All of this stuff you need to keep in mind, but uh, heads up play, especially against, you know, novice and beginning players, even I mean, best case scenario, you get a guy who thinks he's a good player. It really isn't um, highly uncreative, and uh, yeah, this this guy is very often just an open book, um, even live. So you know, online you're very precise. Live, yeah, after an hour or so, you have a pretty good idea what you're dealing with.